Okay, so we've been working with permutations where we're selecting objects and the order we select them in is important, but with combinations, the order is not important. Think of if I deal you a poker hand. It doesn't matter the order I deal the cards. You're just going to work from the um, five cards you're dealt regardless of the order you were dealt them. So, of course, if order isn't important, then we are going to have fewer outcomes. So here's our formula for the combination of objects and objects taken R at a time. You're going to have n factorial over R factorial times n minus R factorial. So we're dividing by an additional R factorial than we were when we used permutations. So let's look at some examples to help you understand this. So we're going to find the number of combinations of four items when you choose four. So if you think about it, if I have four objects, four items, and I'm choosing all four of them, and order isn't important, there's only one way I can do that. And sure enough, the math will bear that out. So I'm going to have five, fact I'm going to have four factorial over four factorial times four minus four factorial. So this is all going to reduce to one. Now let's look at if I have four objects and I'm choosing groups of two and order isn't important. Okay, so using our formula, we're going to have four factorial in the numerator. We're going to have two factorial times four minus two factorial in the denominator. And you can do this math by hand for simple problems like this, but your calculator also does this. So if you look under combinatorics, you're going to have this formula for combinations that you can use on your calculator. And our result here means that the number of combinations of four distinct objects taken two at a time is six. So let's look at this next example. We have the members of a string quartet consisting of two violinists, a violist, and a cellist, and they are to be selected from a group of six violinists, three violists, and two cellists. We want to know how many ways the string quartet, quartet can be formed. So first off, we want to look at the number of the ways the violinist can be selected. We're going to choose two um, from the six possible violinists. So that's 15 ways. We have three violists. We need to choose one. That can be done in three ways. And we have two cellists. We need to choose one. That can be done in two ways. We need to use all this in combination with the multiplication principle. And so we would have five times three times two, where there are 90 ways a string quartet can be formed. Okay, in the second part of this problem, they want to know how many ways the string quartet can be formed if one of the violinists is designated to be the first violinist and the other is designated to be the second violinist. So in this example, choosing the violinist order is important. So let's see how that's going to change our calculation. So to select the violinist, we're going to have to use permutations. So six violinist choosing two with a first and second, there are 30 ways to do that. And then the ways of choosing the other seats uh, remain three and two. So the way to choose a string quartet when we have a first and second chair violin are 30 times three times two or 180 ways.